A smile in return. Alan! Alan! I shouted. She sat there staring ahead at nothing. It was sudden and out of the ordinary, as just moments before we were talking up a storm. He started ahead of the group's lunch tables ahead of us in our school cafeteria. But it wasn't lunch, instead it was just before the beginning of the day. As for our last year at school, we decided to race each other to see who could make it first. Of course, we arrived early as the lights weren't even on and we sat there in the darkness. It was unsettling sitting there in all the emptiness whenever I arrived earlier than him. The lunchroom had windows so whenever it was around the time of year when it was still pitch dark in the morning, it was unsettling sitting there in all the emptiness whenever I arrived earlier than him. The lunchroom had windows so whenever it was around the time of year, whenever it was still pitch dark in the morning, around when I arrived, the unsettlingness was ever present. As I sometimes sat there on a lonely bench looking out at the tables, motionless I was, and sometimes I stared up in fear at the darkness within the split seconds of my eyes being closed, something would appear. Something grotesque, with a darkened form of nothingness, almost something just there, not in any fear of the possible harm it might cause, but just the sight of something that just shouldn't be there. But then Alan would walk in and all the fear would fade away. Damn it, Alan! Stop looking like that! That's when the mumbling started. There are faces in the darkness. There are faces in the darkness. The, the, these faces, the, the smiling. My friend's face began to twitch as he began to smile and turn his head to face me. A wide toothy smile stretched across his face. They're happy, happy smiles in the darkness. Can't you see their faces in the darkness? Happy smiling faces in the darkness. His eyes began to bleed as simultaneously blood began trickling from his nose and ears. It was then I saw the faces. Oh God, those smiles. They were still in the darkness, twenty or so spread out throughout the cafeteria. Happy smiling faces, large eyes of blackness and grins reaching wide. I looked back to my friend and the blood was pouring and the twitching grew in scale as it nearly reached his whole body. He kept repeating over and over. Happy smiling faces, happy smiling faces, happy smiling faces. He paused for a second, struggling. Please, don't let them take me, Daniel. His twitching ceased and he slumped into the bench, sliding to the floor, as if he were a rag doll. And in a blink, he disappeared into the darkness, pulled away by those happy smiling faces. I awoke in a sweat on the bench, shaken awake by one of the teachers. I saw that the lunchroom was now lit and the teacher had noticed my shakiness and, of course, the drenching sweat. He asked if I was okay. I told him I was fine. I just didn't get enough sleep last night. I had a bad dream. He nodded in understanding and told me to get to class. And the whole morning I just kept thinking about how vivid that dream was. I couldn't wait to tell Alan. Fourth period rolls around and it's one of those classes I had with him. I couldn't wait to tell him and he just wasn't there. The end of the day rolls around and nothing. He never answered any of my messages and by the end of the day his parents report him missing. The farthest they've gotten so far is knowing that he made it to school because his car was in the parking lot of the school. But due to the cameras not working outside of the school, they don't really know what happened. Two theories have been floating around. Number one was he was being kidnapped while walking up to school. Second, he just ran away. Just another runaway. But I still go to that bench every morning in that complete darkness. And as I stare into that darkness, I know what really happened to my best friend. And some mornings, if I stare just hard enough, I can see a familiar, happy, smiling face staring back at me. And I can't help but give him a wide smile in return.